Hello, everybody, and welcome to OCD Mikey Hi Fi Guy. And um, I have got uh, a show, uh, a, a, a video for you tonight where um, I feel like going over um, some of these uh, real uh, esoteric level brands. Um, and, and we're going to look at amplifiers to begin with. Whoops. And what we're going to look at is uh, a company called Constellation Audio. The reason that I chose Constellation Audio is because it's really in a lot of the talk. People really think that this is one of those brands that's uh, kind of awesome. Um, these amps are expensive. And um, so I want to get to the bottom of what the hell this brand is because I've never heard of it before. And all of a sudden it just popped up. Again, I don't read the magazines. I don't pay attention to what's in the magazines because it's all BS to me. Um, the magazines and then these this um, these brands, a lot of them just regurgitate stuff. They create new brands out of old brands. Same old guys. <clears throat> same old guys get together and make a new thing and change it and give a new company name and go fire to the metal for, you know, or pedal to the metal, fire in the hole for five years, eight years, and then burn out and then disappear and form another company and go hot and heavy and rake, you know. So what I'm trying to do is separate hi-fi that stems from intent of greed and hi-fi that stems from intent of making a killer product that is a heritage that lasts a lifetime, that means something. Okay, my my first... So, so I'm coming at this constellation like I don't trust it already because it's new on the block and it's really expensive. New on the block as far as I'm concerned. I haven't heard about it. I know it's been around a couple years, you know, 2000, I don't know. Uh, their, their stuff is a little old when I look for it. But it, it, it so, so I, I come to the website. We'll start right here. Come to the website and I come to the About Us. Get to know more about Constellation. The first thing I find out, the company resides not in any one person or any technology. Okay, to me, that's a bad sign. They're not even going to give a person's name who founded it. Okay, so it's no founders. Okay, it, it's, I mean, it's nobody, it's nobody worth mentioning. Let's put it that way. If it was somebody worth mentioning, believe me, they'd tout it. Um, so whoever it is, it's nobody worth mentioning. It's built on a set of values we did. Decades combined experience, manufacturers, dealers, and as customers ourselves. So this is telling me this is former manufacturers from other companies, dealers uh, from, you know, somehow a deal, dealers are in within the founding group, and then uh, customers as well in the founding group, okay? Because they, they built Constellation Audio uh, from a bunch of years as manufacturers, dealers, and customers. So what the hell does that mean? So that means customers funded it. Maybe wealthy clients funded some old guys that are from other companies. And the dealers got in on it and they said, hey, let's make some money. You know, great idea. And we, we'll be anonymous. We won't tell anybody who it is. <laughs> At least I can't find from this website. So that's what I have to go on. I have to go on what they're publishing. And, I, I'm, uh, you know, I can say, well, I heard... It's from, you know, there's some things in there, um, you know, from this guy or that guy. You know, they've got a bunch. I, I've seen like five different names. Bongiorno, which was Earthquake. Uh, Curl, which did, you know, Parasound and other stuff. And, and there's just other guys mixed in. So who knows what part they did? Did they do the inputs, the outputs? Who knows? It just, it's not important enough for them to even say. So this is like an I don't know brand. This is a, I don't know, just listen to it. Does it sound good? Then buy it. That's probably how they sell it. They don't even associate names. They probably don't associate any technology with it because it says technology. We don't do it on any technology. So that's a really easy thing to sell. It doesn't matter who made it. It doesn't matter the technology. Listen to it. Does it sound good? Then buy it. Okay. Well, the problem with that is that shit in 1983 sounded good. So we could be looking at my first you know, skepticism is let's look at the technology inside. OK, because there is no particular technology, they say. So there's no patents here. There's no special technology. This is just already this first sentence in this second paragraph. 
just reeks of hustle to me. You know, they're they're absolving themselves of any liability. They don't want to be on the hook for technology. They don't want to be on the hook for designers. They don't want to be on the hook for shit. They're just saying, here's here's what's up. You know, we come from a very uh, uh, vague set of, you know, foundation. Our foundation is very vague. We're going to be very vague about it, and we're not going to commit to anything, okay? So they asked what products it thrilled, what frustrated and annoyed us, okay? And we asked ourselves, how could we accomplish our goal? Producing audio products exceed the performance of even the most revered and legendary brands. Okay, well, let's see. Okay, so I'm not going to go into, too, I don't want to take too much of this stuff because this is all marketing bullshit. Although, I, and, it probably, and, and I'm telling you, I'm already biased against them. I, I don't know anything about them. I already don't like them. I don't like them right off the cuff from this shit, okay? So I'm forming a judgment right now and, and I'm giving you my opinion, okay? So it's just like an asshole. Everybody's got an opinion, right? And so I've got one too. And this is just my opinion. I may be right, I may be wrong. I'm telling you what I see from my experience in the industry, okay? Um, and that's why you guys come to Mikey because this is how I do things and this is how I tell it. Tell it, I can see it. I've owned an amplifier company. I made these things. Okay, so purity, faithfulness to the original source, blah, 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 duh. It remains the guiding principle, okay? Launch aid, balance, bridge, amplifier. Okay, this is like any time pretty much you balance, you bridge an amplifier, it's going to be balanced. BTL, hello, it's bridged. Okay, rose from our design to keep signal pass simple, transparent, yeah, yeah, blah, blah, blah. Okay, flattered when you see our products displayed in prominence. Dude, this is just hookups. Flattered when you see your products, it's who you know where your, where your stuff gets uh, displayed, you know? If you know the king of France, he's going to display the shit for you, you know? If you know anybody, if you know the guys that own the opera house, they're going to display it. If you not know the guys... So that doesn't mean anything about your gear, really. It just means who your friends are. Craftsmanship. Okay, let's take this to the toll. Okay, let's read this just because we're gonna. I'm gonna hammer on this. Constellation I built by hand. Highly experienced technicians take pains. They hurt themselves actually to make everything perfect. All manufacturing processes are developed in close cooperation with our engineers. I fucking hope so. Who monitor the process to make sure quality is flawless? Okay, they got QC department. Every Constellation Audio product is thoroughly tested and burned in at the factory to ensure performance is designed. Well, you better do that than carefully wrapped, well, I'm glad, and packed in sturdy containers designed to keep our components in perfect condition during shipment. Well, that's, this is bare essential crap, okay? That's what I see. Again, I'm already, I already don't like them, so I'm, 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 I'm already um, just looking at them with that sort of an eye. Okay, um... We understand the purchase of Constellation Audio represents not only a significant investment, it sure looks like it, 55 grand for a stereo amp that I just saw, but a vote of confidence in our company. Yeah, exactly. Like a blind confidence. This is why no matter what products we create, we always design them to the best in their categories. I highly doubt it from what I've seen. And to earn the respect of even the most discerning listeners, I'd say the most mm, inexperienced listeners, perhaps. Who knows? We're not. I'm not, I'm not actually here to... To um, uh, um, um, to question the sound, I want to question the value, okay? Because and this stems out of my little talk with Jay the other day, is because you know what, he goes for the stuff that I think doesn't have value, and I go for the stuff that has value, and I think I can do as good or better than what he's the the stuff that he buys for less money, and he's open to checking it out. So I'd love to show him that. Um, we still have yet to prove it because we just have to get these brands together to know more, but um, we'll eventually do that. So let's do a little looking around at uh, what amplifier boards look like, okay? So you guys know what it looks like inside. Okay, I'm going to go just to some eBay things and to show you very simple things of amplifiers. This is an amplifier output board. This is a class A power amp, 80 watts per channel. These are two transistors. These two things here. Here's another transistor. It drives these two. Okay. Then we've got some resistors. Then we've got some resistors. We've got a heat sink here, which there's probably something on, on the other side. Maybe, a, well, I don't know. Again, I'm not an engineer. I know just enough to be able to critique things 
um, again, I would sit over my engineer's shoulder and watch him build these things, and I would ask him what things were, and he'd kind of explain it. But I have, so I have very general knowledge. Okay, so here's an 80 watt Class A. It's 15 bucks. Okay, all we got to do is slap this onto a, a heat sink, put a power supply to it, and, and, and signal and output, and we've got ourselves an amplifier. So this is the base of, 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 of any amplifier is the, is the power output section. Okay, that's what we've got here. Okay, so 15 bucks. We got two of them, one for each channel. We've got $30. Then we add some heat sink, blah, blah, blah. So we could make an amp for uh, 400, 500 bucks. Okay, that would be an 80 watt class A, you know, power amp. Okay, presumably. But this is just showing you how it's, you know, what they look like. Here's another one. This is 35 bucks. This is a 30, um, a 30, this is a, a stereo pair. Okay, so each one of these, one of these goes on each side, and it's the same kind of thing. You've got these white little, these power resistors you see there. We've got, you know, output devices right here and right here, um, and a driver. And, and you can see, you can start to see this kind of the same thing. This is a power filter. This is when the, when it, this is to filter things and make it quiet on the way in. Um, and, 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 and just, and these are um, other transistors I don't remember exactly what they're, they're, the function is here but you'll start to see the same kind of of uh, look to them okay so these are again 17 bucks a piece okay um, here we go again this is single end class a 30 watt balanced power amp okay so this says this even quotes pass a3 so this is balanced it looks like we have two identical uh, identical boards so if they're they're talking balanced, let's see. So we have balanced halves. So this is a stereo setup here, um, and these are all assembled, ready to go. You just need to plug them in and put them onto a power supply, or put put a power supply onto them, put them onto a heat sink, and you've got a Class A amplifier. Okay, here's another one. This one's clearly more powerful, but you see how they just they, you just line up these output devices. The more of them you add in, the more powerful your amp is. Each one of these power resistors, you can see these white sand cast things that sit there um, that are in front of each of the output devices, okay? These are their MOSFETs or bipolars or JFETs or whatever the design of the amplifier is. This is the output device, okay? Now we're looking at an assembled Chinese amp, okay? Those were all Chinese things. Now we're looking at assembled Chinese amp. This thing's probably a thousand watts, something like that. This is a pro audio amp. But you can see all the output devices are lined up on here. You know, half are push, half are pull. Um, and, and we've got, again, these sandcast power resistors here, these white things. Big ass transformer, okay, which is the power supply. This thing changes 120 volts, steps it down into DC. Well, steps it down into lower voltage AC, and then you rectify it to DC over here with these filter caps. These help filter out all the noise that comes from here. This bank of caps that you see is for cleaning up the sound or the, the, the AC power and then rectifying it in, in this stage under here or somewhere um, where it turns it or it could even be out over here on the ends of these. Um, looks like this is forced air induction. We've got a fan there. We've got a fan here. Since it's pro audio and they don't give a shit about fans sounding, making noise, It'll, it'll blow air in one, suck it out the other, so you have a constant, you don't have to have the heat, heat sink fins on the side. Well, in hi-fi, we don't use fans because they're way too noisy. We have heat sinks on the side, which cool things down, okay? Here's a very close-up of what a basic power supply looks like. Over here on this side, as you can see where, the, where my cursor is, this is the power inlet, okay? And it's got a filter on it. That's why it's a big square box like this. Um, it has a filter um, and, and a fuse in here, so you can you can flip it and change the voltage um, from 220 to, to from 120 to 240. And you've got your AC mains ends right here. Here's your ground. Comes off the third prong. This goes down to the chassis. It's a chassis ground, safety ground. And then these two, your live and your neutral. Your live and your neutral go up and feed this thing called the transformer. Okay, this is your power transformer. This is what. Um, gives power to the unit. This is for the power. Um, this will, right here, and it shows you, it takes 100, uh, uh, 2 times 115 VAC. So 
there's you can have two different ways, but this one looks like it's set up for two uh, two thirty and two forty, um, <clears throat> and then the output is two times twenty four volts. Okay, one hundred VA is the the um, volt amp, so that's that's how much current it has. Okay, the bigger this baby is, the more current it's got. Okay, um, so you've got two times twenty four volts. As these are called the secondaries. So your secondaries are coming off and they're hitting here and then they go through this rectifier right here, bridge rectifier, some filter caps, and we come out this side with DC on the other side, okay? The DC goes into these wires and that's how you power your amplifier. This is super, this is super important in an amplifier. An amplifier modulates voltage, so it calls on these reserve caps when it's making its sound. So the beefier your power supply is, the better your amplifier is going to sound. The, the more linear it'll be. The, 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 the huger your transformer is um, uh, and, the, and the larger your capacitor bank is, the more it's going to be able to provide nice, clean delivery of power to your amplifier. Okay, so you'll see the wicked kick-ass amps have intense caps, intense toroids, okay? They're really just built, and on the on, on the better amps, if if we're talking about a monoblock, you'll see one of these. If we're talking about a stereo amp, really, you should see two of these. If you see one, you know both channels are sharing the same toroid. But in any sort of real amp that's got balls, that's really built well, it's going to have two, one for each channel, it has its own dedicated toroid, its own dedicated. Uh, rectifier stage, but most of the time you're going to see two, one on each side, go to the same rectifier stage, and then split off um, on different rails for the um, for your for your amplifier section. But this again is the power uh, power supply, and this is showing you this is what every power supply does. This is a great picture to show you how it works from AC off the wall to your DC coming off the other side of the power supply, going to run your amplifier. Okay. So here we show, I'm showing you a Chinese amplifier, okay? I don't support Chinese hi-fi, but I want to just show you if you are a company, okay, and you go to China to build your amplifier like this. I happen to know an American company that had this exact amplifier that came to New York and they sold it under a different name, an American name, okay? So, but it's built just like... Almost any of them. You see these white? Again, we see these white sandcast things sticking off. And we see the PC boards. The, you know, regular PC boards. The little caps. Wema are red like that. Those are made in Germany. So that's a good sign if it's got Wemas in there. They're paying attention to something. This looks like they're, they're black caps. If they're black, it's usually a better sign than if they're brown. The brown ones are more so industrial grade or automotive grade. I just know that the better ones usually are black. Then I find here's the output on showing the back side and all that kind of stuff, um, you know, with the output, the, the knobs and everything. OK, and this is another thing, like how it feeds into um, Denifrip's Terminator being a complete hustle um, DAC is look at this. The thing's a thousand bucks. OK, a thousand dollars for a class A, 150 watt class A. There's no way this is 150 watts class A. I'll tell you that right off the bat. It's maybe. 30 watts class a and the rest is a b okay but whatever that's probably what hyper class a means okay but nonetheless it's a it's a, it's a nicely built class a b amp it looks like it's got a copper chassis in here that 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 um will shield it from rf um and um so that's kind of cool that's an extra kind of a bonus you can sell that you can talk about that um it's sectioned off as you can see these um 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 the toroids, okay, and again, remember how I said two toroids, one on each side for each power? So they have dedicated toroids. They have a dedicated bank and a rectification stage and a bank of, 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 of um, filter caps. So this is built in a dual mono type fashion. This is much better than one ass cap, one ass um, toroid right in the middle um, powering both channels. It's much better to have dual transformers because now you're separating the power supplies one for left one for right it just has a better more robust built power supply okay that's the important part this is when companies go to china to have things build 
okay? If I'm, let's say, Constellation, let's say I want to build a shit in, in China, I'm going to go find something like this for a thousand bucks, okay? And this is a thousand bucks from a reseller. This isn't from the company that makes this thing. So I could probably get them less. If I go to the company that makes this thing, I'd probably get these for 600 bucks if I bought 50 of them, you know? Um, and so, hey, 600 bucks, I buy 50 of them, I bring them to the U.S., I slap my name on it, and, uh, and what do I sell it for? If I buy them for 500, maybe I sell it for a couple grand, three grand, four grand. Um, but uh, no, I think other people want to sell things like this that may be worth five, six, eight hundred bucks, maybe 2,000 max, sell them for 14 grand, sell them for 55 grand. Okay, let's uh, let's 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 kind of take a little sniff of the smelling salt. Okay, here's a fifty-five thousand dollar amplifier from friggin' Constellation Audio. Okay, does that look much different to you? You see the white sand sand cast things here, the same shit we were seeing in the Chinese crap. We got the same caps. I mean, they don't even route the wires nicely. They're just haphazardly tossed around in here. You got one friggin' transformer, not even that big, that's powering both channels, okay? We don't even have one transformer per channel behind a blocked wall. We've got the input section uh, protected in here um, because this is just going to spew electromagnetism. And, you know, but you power through it with the output sections. Um, what's really neat here and, 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 and something to note is that the regular heat sinks here, okay, this is just a plain old extruded heat sink. POS, nothing even special. That's like, I mean, look at a Griffin heat sink if you want to see a freaking heat sink. This is just a runoff of piece of a machine, just piece of crap heat sink, okay? Nothing special at all. It's probably made in China, okay? Um, and then what they do is they cover it with some pretty perforated aluminum on the outside so you don't really realize and you're to the naked eye and to the untrained person you just look at the sides and go oh cool look you know it looks different you don't you don't recognize that it's the same old shit uh, with uh, with this with this uh um with this uh heat sink like that if it didn't have those sides you would not be so impressed okay but they cover them, okay? So they take a plain old amplifier and put it inside a beautiful, nice machined case and tell you, and they put the nice rectangular button on the front. You know, here's the, the wire that goes off of that button. That button could be a little teeny uh, friggin' toggle, you know? But no, they put a big wide thing to make you think it's something different. And you, you, you go, oh, look at the big power button. That must be a very important power button. No. It's just a farce, okay? It just looks different, but you're not paying attention, so you don't you don't understand it. You don't get it. You're fooled by all the smoke and mirrors, okay? This amp is fifty five freaking thousand dollars. What? That that's contemptuous for the buyer. That is straight contempt. I mean, you're not just marketing it up a little bit. You are throttling the piss out of the customer. You are relying on marketing so heavy that this is a marketing piece. I call them marketing pieces because it has nothing to do with this, this thing inside. It's a marketing piece. Now, I'm not even saying that it sounds bad. It probably sounds great, okay? I don't dispute that. This is $55,000, $55,000, okay? Let's go to the next thing. Here's, here's another shot um, of that same amplifier, okay, where we're... We're going to zoom in now. Look at these wires. It's, it's a freaking rat's nest in there. They don't even have the decency to put zip ties on this shit and, and, and clean it up for you. You know, they just leave this rat's nest of wires everywhere and you're paying 55 grand for this thing. They sure put the nice gold WBTs on the outside though, don't they? Yep, they do. Okay, we got the cheap ass brown caps. Those things are, are, are cheap, okay? They don't even try and put in high-end caps. They're just putting in industrial-grade uh, caps that are made in the millions, okay? This is, this is one that they sell for 
$14,000, okay? Really pretty on the outside. Look at the nice W, this is Cardus. I don't know what these are. And this one is $14,000 from what I hear, okay? So it's got two boards. Again, we see these sand cast things. The boards look very similar to the $55,000 amp. Strangely similar, okay? Um, they've got, um, you know, the, the filter bank, the cap bank is, is under here. And we again, we've got one toroid to be shared between two channels, one rectification stage for two channels. Not really, here's another view of it, nothing special. This is just some, I mean, honestly, this is like a $25 assembly, you know? This is a $50 toroid. These are $50 boards on each side. This is a you know, $25 heat sink on each side. Maybe less because these are runoff in quantity in China. So they're probably less. Um, but, but I mean, you can get a feel. And, and then this, again, it's covered with the nice perforated sides to look beautiful on the sides, a beautiful back, a beautiful faceplate to cloak what it really is. Here's a $55,000 amplifier sold by or made by Constellation. Here is a $40,000 amplifier made by Griffin, okay? You see the heat sinks? You see the difference here? Do you, can, I mean, can you, you, any dummy should be able to see a huge difference in build quality, a freaking huge difference in build quality, okay? This at 40 grand is worth 40 grand. This at 55 grand is contempt for your ass. And if you're willing to buy it, you just got hoodwinked. Someone just hustled your ass. And it's not Sonic. I'm not comparing Sonic at all. I'm just saying, look at the damn build. Get your money's worth for Christ's sake. Don't be a dumb dumb and just buy dumb dumb audio. Buy hot rod audio. You know, buy this kind of thing, man. This is a hot rod, okay? I mean, we can look at these Griffins. Uh, I mean, look at the, come on, look at this thing. I mean, I mean, dude, look at this. This is a $40,000 amplifier. It, it's absolutely gorgeous. This thing, you can just look at it and you can see it's higher technology. It's just the different minds that made this. Look at the difference in these things. I mean, you should be able to see that. Look at the output wire. I mean, it's just massive. Or is that the input? That's the input, actually. It's all shielded. The output is right here. It's bus bar output, you know? Look at these things. These are the output wires right here, these gold things, you know? I mean, there's a build. If you want to see a build, that's a build. These things are bigger than beer cans, man. And then they got second filter stages in here where these caps are. Okay, so I mean, just pay attention, man. You know, and 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 you know what's going to happen. I mean, here's a different a different view of a Griffin. You know, this one's a little older, clearly much older. But this is like, dude, this thing's probably twenty or more years old. And look at how it's built compared to the Constellation. As I say, inside this thing that looks old, that's old ass ugly technology. That thing's not pretty. The thing's fugly. It's beautiful on the outside. You open it up and it's like you just cracked open a rotten egg. It's pretty on the outside, but inside it smells. So we go back to here. We go back to, to the net. There, they, there we have it again. Okay, so now let's look at another hot rod. A Jeff Roland amp. Okay, so this thing actually has real heat sinks milled into the aluminum of the chassis. Okay, these are functional. They're not just perforated side plates. Okay, with Jeff Roland, okay, for 40 grand, you get a pair of freaking monoblocks. Okay, not just a stereo amp like you do from Griffin or from Constellation. You get yourself a pair of freaking monoblocks. 330 watts per channel, 340 watts per channel, I believe. Hot rod amplifier. Here's a Jeff Rowland that's 30 plus years old. And look at the caps. 
encapsulated transformers so that there's no emission from this, no radiated emission. It's completely encased in steel and, and then potted so that they don't, they don't make any noise, they don't have any emission, they're completely shielded, filled with German capacitors. All these red things are Wemas, okay? This is 30 years old, how Jeff was designing stuff. Look at that board. Compare that to this, dude. Come on, for 55 grand, let's look back at Jeff's 30-year-old design. That thing kicks the shit out of this. Just hammers it. I mean, look at the build difference. Can you see the build difference inside this between that and this? Come on, people. Wake up. This is an amplifier that is winning all sorts of awards. Does that not alert you to something? Does that not tell you that this company is in cahoots with the magazines and the dealers? To rake you over the coals? Yeah, that's what this means. This means there's enough money for all those guys to drive Ferraris and laugh their way to the bank. Okay? Because they're selling you this shit for 55 grand. That is disgusting to me. Okay? That is just, like I said, man, it's contemptuous. Completely contemptuous. Here we go to a real build. 30 years old. From a man with integrity, Jeff Rowland. Another Jeff Rowland amp, even, even more than, than 30, 35 years old or so. But look at the, the, the heat sinks. These are made in America. But see, this is 30-year-old shit that's inside the Constellation. Okay? Look at that. See these heat sinks here? Look what's inside the Constellation. Very similar. Almost identical. These are 30 years old. This is Jeff's stuff 30 years old. Still even even more handy. Still has all the wires tucked away and zip tied nice and neat. But still, look at his giant soda can. He's got six of them in here. Filter caps. Okay, what are we comparing them to? Well, we're comparing them to these caps right here. These little brown sons of bitches. You know? We got any more? Nope. We just have what's on there. Are there any underneath? Nope. That's it, man. This is it. This is their filter caps. Okay, so instead, we can look at that six giant soda cans. Again, 30 years old. Okay, here's a Jeff Rowland preamp. Okay, uh, do you ever seen anything like this? Can you see the difference between that design and this design? I know one's a power amp and one's a preamp, but I'm just saying, look at the design differences. Okay, this is their preamp section. They put it inside a little bent metal case. As you can see, it's just bent metal, sheet metal. Okay, um, or let's look at this. Okay, so each, each, not only, okay, what you saw in that other one, all this crap is in, is in one box, inside one metal case, all of this stuff, okay? Jeff separates the left and the right. This again, this is an old amp, a preamp, okay? We've got the left Output transformers, the input transformers are completely isolated, left and right. They're inside a milled out block of aluminum. You can see the machining marks. This is milled out by a giant CNC machine. And then these are custom built case, cases with hex head screws. They're stainless steel, non-magnetic, that hold these parts together, that cover the PC boards, are encapsulated within their own module, inside their own compartment from a machined out chassis. Come on, man. I mean, why do you people buy this kind of shit right here? Because you're being raked over the coals by the media. You're, you're, you're buying it because it gets good reviews. And so you're being totally hustled because you're believing in the reviews. This is what the reviewers will sell you. This is what the magazines will sell you. They'll tell you it's the best of the year. And this is what you're buying, people that are buying Constellation. You're buying this stuff. Dude, I wouldn't buy this in a million freaking years. If you gave it to me, I'd sell it the next day. I'd get rid of it. And I'd go get me something that was built like that. Something that was built like this. This is real. OCD hi-fi. This is how it's done. This is how this shit is made. It's not made like that other crap. Look at this amplifier. Here's Jeff's amplifier. Look at his output stages. 
This is a stereo, no, yeah, this is a stereo amp, 625. Okay, I mean, you can just tell it looks different. This, these output devices are, are, are screwed into the, fr the body of this thing, which makes up this giant heat sink. It is, I mean, <laughs> oh God, I, if I could just give everybody, put a smelling salt under your nose so you guys could wake up. I mean, this is such different design than what we see right here, okay? I mean, can't you see, we'll, we'll, we'll do a close, close up on this. I mean, look at how it's just completely different design. This is tight. There's no wires. These are the bus bars that are the, the where the wires on those other ones. Instead of wires, this uses bus bars. Jeff uses bus bars. I mean, you can see there's no there's no wires in here. He's got these two little for the sensors, you know, and these little teeny things. But there's no wires. Wires that stick out. Wires that if you have wires running around, all they do is pick up noise, man. They're like antennas. Come on, people. You need to wake up. Here is this thing showing, you know, the back of the Constellation. 55 grand. Looks beautiful on the outside, doesn't it? Nice, pretty outputs and everything. But when you open it up, boom. Ha, ha, ha. That's what you get. Okay. Okay, so here's a view of the underside of that amp. What you couldn't see is that output section that I just showed you, Jeff Rollins. That's just the output section. That's the top of the amp. If we flip the amplifier over, this is machined out of the block of aluminum. And this is the power supply. Do you see a transformer in there? No, there isn't even a transformer in there. You know why? Because this is a switching mode power supply. Why? Because Jeff is cutting edge of Class AB design. There's nobody that's taking Class AB as far as Jeff has. No transformer. Tell me another company that can make an amp sound the way Jeff's ABs do with no transformer. This is all, and this takes up the whole bottom. It's not just the front section of, of, of the top, like, like, like the, the Constellation. This is the whole bottom of the amplifier. And it's milled down halfway, and then the other side is milled down halfway. So there's a middle wall in here that's not just a piece of metal that's stuck in there. This is actually a solid wall with no cracks in it or whatever. Anywhere the wire needs to go through, there's a small hole drilled, and the wire goes through, and that's it. There's no seam in here. This is machined out with a lid on it. Okay? So, look, I wanted to take that time to simply show you guys the difference between a quality build and something that sounds good but is a different build you can make any of the amplifiers there's there were a lot of amplifiers krells and things like that that came from back in the day and uh, old mark levinson stuff that was really killer okay they were all great back then you know i make i made an amplifier that was designed way back when by guys that work for all tech lansing you know these are killer amps. They still sound good. They're just not expensive to build. So when I see somebody that builds around it, an old-ass technology, builds around it, uh, puts perforated inside, makes pretty metal around it, and sells the same old shit rehashed for fifteen grand or fifty-five in that case, that makes me pissed to no end, okay? Um... And the, it's, it's worse when customers think they know what's going on and they brag about that shit. And you're like, you're the biggest fool. They come to, oh, I got some on Constellation monoblocks. And you're like, oof. Oh, God. I can't even say anything. I'm like, oh, really? Okay. That's cool. Because I know they just got their ass hustled, you know? And they got, oh, you know, 1982 technology for 55 grand. And they're all showing off to their friends that they got the new constellation monos and it's like dude you look like the biggest rube right now like you totally got hustled and you don't even know it and your friends don't even know it you guys think that the shit that's in the magazines that's well reviewed 
is like the cat's meow. And you have no idea of how spoiled this industry is rancid at this point. You have to, you cannot count on the magazines or the reviewers to tell you what's good. They're going to tell you what pays them. They're going to tell you the brands that buy the advertising. I mean, it's a million, you've heard this a million times. I just proved it to you by showing you the technology. So if you want to buy that stuff, go right ahead. You could get that same sound for a tenth of the price. Okay. If you want to have a Swiss watch that is built like a Swiss watch, then you buy Jeff Rowland, then you buy Griffin, then you buy, there's other brands too. I really don't say half of the stuff that's on my mind um, most of the time because it's mostly futile because everybody likes to show off their stuff. It's not about do they sound good or not. It's about how much did you pay for some old ass technology. Anyway, so I just wanted to show you that, give you a little look into how things are built because I know that you guys don't know what you're looking at when you open things up. So I'm trying to help. That's it. I'm Mikey. You're you. Together, we do hi-fi. See ya.